G'day, we're down here in Tasmania for the Briggs Athletics Classic. Uh, in the car with Mossy today, we have got none other than the current national 10,000 metre record holder. It's Benny St. Lawrence. So we're in the car with Benny St. Just doing a bit of a reverse here, mate. I'm not really great at driving these huge cars. It's only a rental though. That's right, mate. That's right. You got insurance? Well, I don't even have a license myself. <laughs> nice. One of the things they um, talked about, you know, when you, you get a rental car, is they say, you know, do you want to get your excess reduction? Hey, that's where they sting you. Yeah. It costs you more to reduce that excess. Because she said, you've already got excess reduction. It was 3000 bucks. I said, no, cut it down. Yeah. Do you go it? We always, I get as much insurance as I can. <laughs> just in case. Has there been an incident? Uh, not yet, thankfully. No. So mate, the boy from Bulwara, is that right? Bulwara, yeah, Bulwara, yeah, right, eh? Hey? Aboriginal yeah. for Blue Skies Village. Oh, right. And it, it rains a lot there, so. Yeah, Makes yeah. sense, yeah. Up in the Blue Mountains, mate? Yep. Not enough to get uh, altitude training, but. Uh... Not quite, but I think it probably helped growing up running around at uh, 800 metres or 700 metres. A lot of uh, trail running, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, a lot of trail running. A lot of different sports. Played a lot of basketball, raced BMX. Swimming, tennis, all that sort of stuff. So. Let's let's go back to basketball, mate. Uh, I'm assuming you're probably one of the guards. Point guard, point yeah. guard on yep. point. Yep. Trash talking, always. It was uh, a lot of fun, you know. Basketball was huge. I was growing up in Jordan's era, and uh, yeah, we were massively into it. My parents would beg me to stop playing out in the backyard because the, the ball was hitting the wall, and it was just you know driving everyone nuts. But did you go get a pair of uh, Nike Air Jordans? I did. Yeah, we went to we went to the US when I was in year six. Picked up a pair of Oakleys and uh, some Nike Air Jordans, and got back to school thinking I was the coolest kid getting around the mountains. Yeah. Did your mum and dad say you couldn't wear them to school and you just snuck them in your bag? Because that's what I did. No, they were all good. I was the king of seventh grade. I think yeah. everyone else was wearing KT twenty sixes, and I've just rocked up in a pair of uh, Nikes, but I had to put them in my bag. Yeah. I had to wear the black shoes. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, as far as your running goes, when did that all start to kick off? Um, like competitive, you mean? Well, I think I was in little A's in under eights. Um, first did the city to surf when I was eight years old. Um, yeah, it was always racing as a kid, but never took it too seriously. And started running cross country and steeplechase through high school. Um, wasn't one of the standout juniors, but picked up a few state and national medals. The idea was always to get into running seriously when I finished high school, but yeah, that didn't really happen. And yeah, I think. A lot of people already know the story, had a few years off, um, living a very different lifestyle and didn't get back into it until 2006 and uh, that's when I sort of joined with my coach Sean Williams and started taking things pretty seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, look mate, I'm, I'm a Bathurst boy, 2795, yeah. pretty proud and I, I know you had a bit of time out there at uni. What did yeah. you, you do at uni? I studied, I got a Bachelor of Exercise Science and a Bachelor of Social Science Psychology. Oh, we've got so much in common here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you went the double degree? Yeah, yeah. did the double degree. Yeah, so. cool. Yeah. Do you have plans on using that when you get out? Yeah, well, I've, I've used, um, you know, I worked in, in the city and I was an exercise uh, physiologist at yeah, the, yeah. the health testing centre in there and then worked as a health and wellbeing consultant for ING and ANZ, so definitely used those degrees then, but um, yeah, sort of work's taken a little bit of a backseat the last couple yeah. of years with uh, the focus being running, but definitely want to get back into some... Uh, yeah, I, might have a in I might have a job for you, mate. I do workplace well wellness consulting as yeah, well, yeah, so yeah, right, 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 right. right. I'll uh, flick my resume. Through. Yeah, definitely, mate. No, no, you've, I've got your resume, it's all good. <laughs> so back in Bathurst, mate, uh, things blew out a little bit, put on a few extra Ks. Yeah, I guess I, you know, I tried to run for a little while while I was there. I, I ran at the Olympic trials in, in 2000 and was trying to make the world junior team, but missed out. Uh, I think I was four seconds off the qualifier that year. Uh, and I, I mean, I was lucky to be running that fast. I was sort of cheating the system, wasn't really training too much, and was drinking to excess. And I was always feeling guilty that I should be out running and should be training. And so instead of quitting drinking to focus on running, I quit running to, to focus <laughs> on drinking so that I didn't feel so guilty anymore. And yeah, that was, it was meant to be just a six month or a year decision to enjoy the social side of things, get that out of my system and then get back into running. But once I got into that lifestyle, it's really hard to break that uh, those habits. and. So you weren't, you weren't like a running kid with a drinking problem, you were a drinking kid with a running problem. That's how it felt, <laughs> um, you know. Oh, well look, first year of uni, yeah. everyone, everyone gets amongst it. Yeah, it was, it, was it was a lot of fun. I made some great friends, people I'm still friends with now, but yeah, I guess it, it really blew out. And for a couple of years I got away with it, I was still quite healthy and, you know, the body was holding up to it. But then towards the end, I just, uh, 
yeah, blew out, put on quite a bit of weight. Just felt terrible, so that was when I decided it was time to start looking after myself a bit more. And started with a bit of bike riding and jogging and that sort of thing, but uh, slowly lost the weight and started to get a bit of competitive spirit back and decided to jump in a few fun runs around Sydney and that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thought maybe I'd be a chance of uh, giving giving this a bit of a crack. So yeah, decided to get into it pretty seriously. I remember reading in Runners World, I think it was, or well, it might have been Run for Your Life. I'm not sure about. You're climbing a tree in McCaddy Park in Bathurst one night, is this correct? Yeah, that actually made the Daily Telegraph. Oh, is that what it was? Uh, yeah, we oh, I was we used to do these pub runs at university and you know, you'd go from all the different pubs around town, you'd have to pass, pass through McCaddy Park and I think I was telling one of my mates that I, I used to climb trees like the one there and he, he didn't believe me so I took his hat off and climbed to the top of the tree and put it on top of the tree and sat there for a day or two and then blew down and he was joking, he said, oh, we should put something up there that's gonna stay there a little bit longer. So the next weekend, um, got a milk crate and climbed up the tree and put the milk crate up there. And uh, to tie it up, I took the belt off that I had on and so tied it on with my belt. <laughs> Problem was when I was climbing down, my pants kept falling down. Oh, so nice. Made it down alive and then, uh, yeah, it was kind of a bit of a landmark in Bathurst. People would go and look at the crate at the top of this tree. And then I guess it was a slow news week and it made the front page of the paper, people trying to figure out how this crate had got to the top of the tree and they had people writing in with their theories and uh, in the of, telegraph it wasn't in no, the this was western in the, like, advocate this, was, this yeah. was in the western advocate yeah. and uh, so it generated all this buzz and it was a big mystery and i never you know came forward as a person who put it up there just let it sort of let it slide. simmer as a bit of a mystery but then uh, a friend of mine works in works in the media in sydney and he was chatting to a guy called neil cordy who used to work on sports tonight and is now with the, the telly and he was telling Neil this story and that was when I'd qualified for the Olympics and Neil thought it was quite a funny story so he yeah. did a bit of an interview with me and uh, yeah it ended up I think the headline was why making the Olympics is the second best thing Ben's ever done or something, <laughs> something along those lines so that was quite funny that's, that's classic mate yeah. Um, yeah so as far as running goes you know you're obviously doing your what's your most comfortable 10k? You, you, you like no, the 10? I'm not sure 5 and five and 10 I've had some yep. really good races at 5 and some yeah. good races at 10 so yeah, I guess there's only really one good chance to run a fast 10 of the year unless you make a championship or unless they put one at Prefontaine or, yep. or something like that. So that's the Stanford 10K. And yep. That's probably my my happy place there, my, my, my track. I've only raced there twice. First time set the Australian record and the second time I won and qualified for, uh, for Moscow Olympics. I'm uh, getting tingles just Games, listening yeah. to them, mate. Yeah. Uh, Moscow World Champ, sorry. Um, so I was hoping to go back last year, but got it, picked up a bit of an Achilles injury, so missed out. So, so you're still carrying that injury, aren't you? Well, well hopefully not. We'll see. We'll find well, out tonight. Touch wood. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's come a long way in the last month or two. So yeah. yeah there's a lot of kids out there that'll uh, be watching that because you know we've got a huge fan base, um, and now I guess they'd be sort of looking at, you know what steps they need to take because there's a lot of kids who will go they'll be you know national champions but once they get into the seniors they'll sort of flounder and, and they'll fall away because they're not used to winning medals they're not used to not winning medals yeah um so for you what would be the advice for them well definitely don't try and do what i did don't quit the sport and you know get heavily into drinking and, and yeah. that sort of thing but uh i think the transition years are, are pretty pretty tough for some juniors as you say you know stand out juniors and then all of a sudden they're racing senior competition and teams seem pretty hard to make and that sort of thing but the key is just to surround yourself with people who you enjoy training with and make it fun and you know you'll have fun while you're progressing and yeah target target some races in Australia and if you get the opportunity to travel make the most of that and even if you're not making teams you can still go and do some races abroad and for me that's uh, you know that was one of the best things about running is the fact yeah. that I get to spend a lot of time overseas meeting interesting people and competing around the world. The first trip I ever made was a Chiba Ekaden in 2007 and I was shitting myself, you know, felt way out of my league yeah. wearing, wearing the green and gold and sort of didn't know what I was doing there but uh, that was a really good developmental team. I went over there and came back really fired up and, you know, tried to make the next step and 2008 I think uh, just scraped into the world cross country team and came 120th which was terrible and embarrassing but, uh, you know, another step forward and and it's all just sort of progressed from there. So you don't need to go from juniors to winning national medals and making the Olympics. There's a lot of different things you can do along the way. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The key is, yeah, as I said, just have fun so that it's not all about the the end result. It's, 
you know, also about the journey and the process. And if you're having fun doing that, then the rest will take care of itself. A lot of um, sportsmen, you know, they're not necessarily great as a, a young person. I, I come from a hockey background and there's two guys I know, Simon Orchard and Matt Dawson, and they weren't standout juniors at all. But around about that 16, 17 years of age, that's when everything sort of clicked into gear for them. And I call it the switch. And you see this, you know, with the great tennis players that, you know, you and I might go and we'll hit you know, a thousand tennis balls and think we're doing great, but they'll just keep going. 2,000, 3,000 until it's absolutely yeah. perfect. They call it the 10,000 hour sort of yeah. uh, principle for that. Um, but moving forward, mate, I just wanted to know what goes through your mind when you are absolutely hurting, you know, 5K, 12 and a half laps, you're absolutely hurting, there's a couple laps to go. What do you start telling yourself? Um, that, that, that's either the my favorite part of the race, a couple of laps to go, or the worst part of the race, <laughs> yeah. because usually by that point you know, yep. you know whether you've got anything left in to fight to the finish, or if you, you're stuffed and you, you know, you're just gonna drag yourself to the line. So if you feel like you got any chance, it's just balls out, just give it everything you've got. And, yep. and that's my favorite part about racing, particularly if, you, if it's a race where you're not expected to still be in it with two laps to go, you know, and you're yeah. racing guys that uh, you're probably not expected to beat, and you're just throwing down, and you're getting your elbows out, and you're, you know, trying to just squeeze every last ounce of energy out, and uh, not much goes through your mind other than you're just trying to sort of pay attention to who's around you and what they're doing, and, and, and but also internalising and trying to make sure that you're not you're not going too hard, but you're not not going hard enough, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Sometimes there's nothing going through your mind, but at other times there's there's everything going through your mind. And, then you might get just some weird part of a song stuck in your head for a hundred meters. Yeah, what would it be? What's the? I can't you, even you remember. You were your uh, racing tonight. I wonder what I could put in your <laughs> yeah, head. Yeah, you put something annoying on. I bet it'll pop up tonight. <laughs> yeah, Frozen. You know, Frozen. Um, I got young kids. And yeah, they, I yeah. don't. Thankfully, so I'm no worries. I'm yet to see Frozen. Right, oh mate, I'm just going to pull over here because I've got no idea where we're going. Yep. But we actually have a gift for you. Your very own version of the Naked Runners. Uh, hat. Now I'm um, going to tell you this. There, there's only there, mate, there's only six in, wow. the, in the world. Wow. So we're actually handing that over to you. What I want to do is, can you pop that on? And the one thing about Dave Robber, he loves seeing eyes. <laughs> I know Oakley, massive uh, fan of Oakley. But if you can get you to pop that on, pop the glasses. Look at those eyes, kids. Beautiful. Hey? Yeah, beautiful. You two can be like that. And that <laughs> looks fantastic, mate. The trucker's cap. So naked runners giving me a piece of clothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, the Naked Runners is all about what we sort of, you know, we're trying to promote is people just getting out there and getting amongst it, not having to have all the gear, the headphones yep. in particular, because when you run, you're marketing being active to yeah. the world. Yeah. And if you're pounding the pavement and you're not looking like you're having fun and you've got Metallica screaming through your ears, yeah. you know, everyone else is going, well, that's exactly why I don't run. Yeah, yeah I, I do some runs where I don't wear a watch, just get out there and, and just enjoy. You know, if it's an easy 40 minute run and I know where I've, I've got a nice loop, I love to get out and just just not wear any technology, that sort of thing. Yep. Then again, other times I love listening to music. And yeah, right, eh? Comedy podcasts, that sort of thing. Yeah, what do you listen to? Uh, oh, I've been through a lot. I used to listen to the Ricky Gervais podcast oh, yeah. while I was running home from work and I'd get some funny looks, stopped at traffic lights waiting to cross running, just laughing my head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get people thinking you're a bit crazy. No, that's good, that's we naked. Probably probably are a little bit crazy, yeah. yeah. Well, you've got to be crazy to be a, an elite sportsman, that's for sure. I think so. Definitely. So, our uh, favourite band, mate, What's uh, what would be, mm. what, do you, what do you like to listen to? That's a tough one. I was saying the other day, someone asked me what, what band I listened to when I was young that, that I can still put on and, and really enjoy, and I think Chili Peppers has got to be yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, seen them live a number of times. And wow. Like, you know, a lot of bands I go through and then I get sick of them and won't listen to them again, but Chili Peppers, I can chuck that on. Enjoy it. It's like Blood Sugar Sex Magic. There's not a song in there that you, exactly. you don't skip a song. Yeah. You know, it's, it, I actually went and downloaded a heap of sort of the songs I listen to or the music I listen to. You know, Pearl Jam, Metallica, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers the other day, and it was really cool. I felt like I was young again. Yeah. yeah. So what's the future, mate? What's um, you know, where tonight we've got the Briggs Athletics Classic. You yeah. Throwing one down in the 5K there. Yeah. Tonight's, you know, I've got no expectations. It's I wasn't planning on racing until late February or March, so yeah. this is a, a lot ahead of schedule, so I'm really grateful to be lining up, and it's a really good field with Brett yeah. Robertson, Dave McNeil, we've got um, Dua Yoa, James Nipperis, Brenton Rowe, uh, so yeah, just getting in there and seeing how things are going, and I'll be happy if I finish and my Achilles isn't too sore, yeah. and, uh, 
but once again, you know, I'll be, I'll be trying to run as hard as I can, and sometimes you pop out good races when you least expect it. So, yeah, it'll be fun. You guys have all been at altitude as well. Yep. yep. Yeah, talk us through Falls Creek. So Falls Creek is it's awesome. It's you know probably one of the best places in Australia, or one of the only places in Australia to get some altitude training done. It's up at around 1,600 metres. Yep. Uh, you get people coming down usually just after Christmas from the 27th. Some people come for a week or some come for a, a month like we did and it's awesome. I think there was, there's been a couple of runs on those training camps where there's 200 people out yeah, running together. Right. And, you know, I think there was over, well over 100 at one of our K sessions and that sort of thing. So, so it brings everyone together and you, you train hard and it's pretty relaxing up there. There's not much else to do so you recover well. And, just a good vibe and it's a good way to start the year you know january is often a time where you get easily distracted back in sydney everyone wants yeah. to come around for a barbecue go out for beers do this and that but if you're in falls you're, you're just working hard and getting off to a good start so i think this is my sixth or seventh year in a row i've been down there can you remember your first time going there what it was like yeah i do yeah we went down a uh, group of us from sydney i think we're only there for 10 days or so and i did what Quite typical of someone down at Falls for the first time. Climbed up a tree and put a <laughs> no, <laughs> not this time, um, not the first time. Tried to tried to train with guys I wasn't quite ready to run yeah. with. But uh, who who? Oh, there was I think Mottram was down there that year. Yep. Collis, um, Troopy, Scott Westcott, guys yep. like that. Marty Dent. Um, it probably just went a bit above and beyond what I was able to at the time, but loved every minute of it and came away pretty sore. But uh, yeah, I think I ran a PB not long after coming back, so it obviously worked. Yeah, I've talked to a few. Uh, guys that have sort of come back after their first falls and they're just pinching themselves, you know. I guess they get a bit starstruck, but also just the training sessions they've been through. And, yeah. You know, and, and athletics is a it's, it's a lonely sport, I'm sure. I guess at it can times. Be, it and, can be definitely. And, and that's you know where you do get that opportunity to uh, be a part of a team and yeah. be a bit more looser as well. Yeah. When I was up there, I was you know pretty fresh and didn't know much, so I was asking a lot of questions. Asking, I remember Mono was always good answering questions, um, chatting to Nick Bedeau on one of my first years up there. So everyone's really sort of welcoming and happy to share knowledge. So I guess now that I'm one of the older guys and more experienced, I, I hopefully can impart some wisdom on some of the junior guys and girls. Now, coach, Sean Williams, yep. coach of some of the greats, yep. uh, Sweat Sydney. Yep. Um, last year, put you through, uh, took your clothes off, mate, for a calendar, ah, which yes. is this year, 2015. Yep. What was that like, mate? You're looking pretty good, I have to admit. Thank you, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's my best angle. <laughs> Not many lights on uh, from the side. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. We, we were just trying to raise some money for you know people who might not be able to quite afford to say get to a national series meet or get over to the US to try and get a qualifying standard that sort of thing and um, the idea was put forward by Neil Berry uh, one of the guys who was training with us at the time and yeah just asked for people who'd be interested in helping out so I'm not sure if I ever agreed to it or if it was just assumed <laughs> that I would that I would get involved so it, a lot of people came forward and volunteered their time we have professional photographers um, you know artistic directors all that sort of stuff that's why it yeah. came out so well and printers and that sort of thing and so yeah it came together and it was a mix of elite athletes recreational athletes I think Shawnee even got his gear off in there yeah he couldn't wait for it <laughs> do you remember what month you were uh, I think I'm first up January so yeah, and I think I mean, we've had about 15 requests for uh, 15 extra days in January, please. Yeah, nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that was quite interesting. There was, I think, five people standing around helping out while I was standing there completely naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, apparently my tan line was popping up a bit too much, so I had a gentleman apply makeup to my ass cheek. Yeah, nice. While he was chatting to me about running, so that was quite an experience. But yeah, it was good for a laugh, and it turned out pretty good product I think so yeah Vic, Vic Mitchell she went all out she's, she did yeah she got it all out she's yep. a bit like that in general yeah she's good fun yeah she is now mate I've got no idea where we are <laughs> we're you've almost somewhere. brought me back to the hotel I think. yeah right yeah. I've, I've got that sense of direction I, I think, <laughs> I, think I went for a run with Dave Robbo this morning and sort of I'm coming back from injury and I said look we'll just, just do a little run and you know for me a little runs you know five k's yep. and so nine k's later and we're uh, yeah feeling a little bit sore, but we eventually we got back. Where'd you, so we, where'd you run to? We just went up on the actual pretty much the path that we just took, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, um, nice. just up to the athletics track there, yep. uh, the domain athletics track, and yeah had a chat to a few people. Uh, everyone's pretty excited, to, you know, have the likes of you down here and um, you know the peacocks throwing again. So yeah, yeah it's, it's good fun. Yeah, it's a great event down here. Yeah, for sure. It's it's my first time down here, so yep. first time in Tassie. 
well. At all, yeah. yeah Tassie's yeah. great. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Tassie's one of the uh, biggest supporters of Australian distance running, I think, with they have three big fun runs or road races each year that have, you know, pretty much four grand for the winner. So if you can come down here and race successfully, you, you can get about four, five, six, seven, eight, ten grand if yeah, you're having a good yeah. year. And, uh, you know, that really helps us to pay for some of the overseas trips and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, so Bernie 10. Bernie 10. You won that before? Never won it. Ooh, soft. Yeah, sorry. Second a few times, third a couple of times. Just yep. can't seem to win that one, unfortunately. And then Launceston, and then Hobart has another one as well. So another one that I can't seem to win. But it's always a good race, a lot of fun. So there's the uh, the uh, motel up there, mate. Yeah. I always get motel, hotel. Like, you're, you're probably about my age. It's, What's the sure difference? Which, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there I, is one. Yeah, hotel might have originally had, or has a, a bar with it. Uh, accommodation yeah. and a bar. Yeah. Motel is just, yeah. Completely out there, nice. mate. This is this is ridgy ditch here. <laughs> We're down, down there in three star. Looks like you're in six and a half star here. Yeah, right? they got to look after us, you know. The best western. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, mate, I'll pull up over here and uh, Benny Saint. Absolute pleasure to have you in the car with Mossy. It's been great. Yeah, you're the first elite athlete awesome. to, to do so. And thanks, thanks for taking me for a ride. Cheers. Cheers.